Jeremiah chapter 24 The Lord showed me Behold two baskets of figs Were set before the temple of the Lord So the main frame of Jeremiah He's at the he's a priest A lot of his action is at the temple At the gates of the temple The temple is still there after Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and the princes of Judah. Now, Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, will come three times before they sack and destroy the city. And each time they carry away the people in the land. And it says that... Uh, the princes of Judah. The, with the carpenters and smiths. Now smiths would be blacksmith, metal smiths. And what's going on here? Well, Nebuchadnezzar, the army, does not want Jerusalem to be rebuilt. The destruction they had done, they pulled all the workers. And there was a time during King Saul and Jonathan that there were no smiths in the land. They had to go to the Philistines to sharpen their garden tools with permission. And you know, the people cry, you know, the, the government's trying to take my guns, the government's trying to take my guns. The government will take a lot more other things from you than your guns. When you and the prices at, at, the, laun at, laundry, at the lumber places are going ridiculous, the store shelves are lacking. When you start finding things lacking at the stores as they are now that you can't make and buy to keep you and yourself going as it is right now. You see, the, the typical Christian, well, they're trying to steal my guns, they're trying to steal my gun, and they don't see that when I go to the big name stores and the shelves are empty and I can't buy cleaner to clean my house and I can't buy toilet paper, but you use toilet paper. For, and I can't buy stuff at, at, the, at the lumber place because it's out of price and they're lacking you get Jeremiah chapter 24 we are in the days of Jeremiah in America, in the world and what's happening is slowly by slowly never mind gun control they are limiting what the typical person can build and make and supply themselves to maintain themselves. And we know that there's coming a time that everything will be owned by the Antichrist in order to get anything. There's coming a time when the church will be gone that the people left behind will have to have the mark. One basket had very good figs. Even like figs that are first ripe. I assume those are the best figs. The other basket had very naughty figs. Now, I'm 53 years old. I was born in 1968. I grew up in New London County in Connecticut, a Yankee. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not a Southerner, even though I live in Florida. But by the way, Florida is too south to be considered a Florida. Florida is a refugee state. That's what it is. And then I had the thing when we were growing up, well, that's a little that's a little naughty boy. That's a naughty girl you have there. Those are naughty children. I don't know how the expression is where you come from, where you live, but in Connecticut, Yankee land, <laughs> naughty was you know is how you described a child that was bad. Well watch how you use your words and be careful, which could not be eaten, they were were so bad, they're rotten. And that's another expression. Probably people didn't know how to buy. That's a naughty little boy. That, that child is rotten. Oh, I don't believe the Bible. Then why are you quoting from the Bible? Why are you using naughty and rotten together? And yet that comes out of the King James Bible. I don't look at the modern Bible. And then the Lord said to me, What seest thou, Jeremiah? 
And I said, things. The good things. Very good. And evil. Very evil. Oh, look at that. We got interpretation in the Bible, from the Bible, by the Holy Spirit of God and using a man by God of the Holy Spirit that we're given a definition. We didn't need the Hebrew. We didn't need the Greek. The English says that naughty is evil. So I'd be very careful when I say naughty little boy, naughty little girl, because you're actually, I got Webster 1913, where naughty I'm just checking, worthless, bad, good, nothing, wicked, corrupt. I don't have a Webster's 1828 dictionary for that. All right, look at the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. If you're seeing the video, you can't see it online. Badness, wickedness, evil. So if by chance, if by chance, the perverted Bible, I don't know what the perverted Bible say. Let's, let me go check. This one will check, Jeremiah 24. Bible gate. Shrink me down. All English translations. Okay. So let's see. Alright, evil. Bad. Bad things. Bad. Let's see. NIV. The Living Bible says rotten. NIV, New England Standard Version, bad, bad, New King James, bad. Well, they watered it down. I mean, we've got, they say bad, well, the English dictionary that we speak from, badness, weakness, evil. Naughty. And how many people use the modern version, versions of the Bible and will use the word naughty? Well, my Bible is easier to read. And then you use the King James Bible verse. So he says evil, very evil, that cannot be eaten. They are so evil. They're rotten. Like I said, when I come from Connecticut, Naughty and rotten. We didn't use the word bad. Bad was too simple. Bad was not bad enough. That child is naughty. That child that has, has cut that girl's hair in this school, that's rotten. That child that, that, that does harmful things to cats, that's rotten. That's not bad. So you lesson. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying. Thus saith the Lord. Now that was an illustration. That was two baskets, figs, good figs, naughty figs. That was an illustration. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Your God better be the God of Israel. Like these good figs. I mean, you guys want how is God doing this? Does he pick up and the good things that somehow he demonstrates a good thing. I don't know if Jeremiah can see the Lord. Or okay, there's this two baskets. Alright, these good things. Is God somehow eliminating not illuminating that good the good things? I mean, I would assume Jeremiah would, would be given it. He would pick up the goods, the, the best goods. You see any good things? So will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive to Jude. All right, those are gone away.
carried away. They've been taken by the army. Whom I have sent out of this place in the land of Chaldeans, Babylon, for their good. God has carried away people, the Jews, the Hebrews, the Israelites, into Babylon for good. He protected Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo, and Ezra and Nehemiah, and Ezekiel. Because we'll learn that had they stayed, they would have been killed. He said, well, why did God move me here? It may be for your protection. God moves us for many reasons. It may be he's protecting us for his honor and his glory. I will set my eyes, God speaking, for them for good. Good figs, good. So the figs represent Judah, Israel. So when Jesus came to that fig tree looking for fruit, there was no fruit. That's the nation of Israel. And he cursed that tree. Because you produce no fruit. And then later on, Israel will kill Stephen. And they'll utterly reject the apostles and Paul. And it's like, all right, we're going to the Gentiles. Now, individual Jews we reach out. But as a corporate body, okay, God put them on a shelf for a while. He's not finished with them. I will bring them again to this land. They're coming back. Ezra and Nehemiah. 1949. The Lord Jesus Christ. I will build them. Ezra and Nehemiah. That's World War One, World War Two. Today. And then when the Lord Jesus Christ. You realize history repeats itself with God. And when you don't study history. You're not going to know what God's doing. And many Baptist preachers and teachers avoid the history. And they don't know nothing. And not pull them down. Now that was not Ezra and Nehemiah. Because the, the city was torn in 70 A.D. by Titus. Now Jesus Christ will build them and they will not be plucked down. I will plant them like a vineyard. That, that plant, that tree, that vine that we are grafted into. That's why Jesus talks to, to the nation of Israel you are the fruit. Wherefore, by what fruit you are is what tree you are. And there was a vineyard. And the husband men let the vineyard out. I will give them a heart to know me, a new heart. That's millennium. That I am the Lord. They don't have that new heart today. They did not have that new heart in Nehemiah and, and Ezra. Nehemiah is ready to leave Babylon. He's got everything packed up and he can't find the Levites. And he's got to go looking for the Levites. Hey, we're ready to go. Where are you? That's not having a heart settled upon the land. I will be their God. Now, Jehovah is their God, but not only Jehovah, but the Lord Jesus Christ, which is not their God corporately. That's not even the Jehovah Witnesses. That's not the Catholics. Catholics have a whole different God. That's not the Mormons. They have another God. Ishmael, the Arabians. have another God. Islam has another God. The ancient Orientals have another God. Israel will have that one true God one day and it will be God 
and the God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And they shall return unto me with their whole heart. Yeah, I, uh, it died out. There was one point, Nehemiah is like, why are you, they're doing business on the Sabbath again. Isn't that why we were, and there wasn't a whole heart when Jesus showed up. I mean, there are preachers who say, oh, they were looking forward to the cross. Okay, if they were looking forward to the cross when they crucified Jesus, why didn't they sit at the empty tomb waiting the three days and three nights? How come every time Jesus told them, hey, listen, I'm going, and the Gentiles are going to spit up on me, and they're going to treat, mistreat me, and they're going to crucify me, and then on the third day, I'm going to be resurrected. And then the disciples had no idea what he was talking about. I mean, this is foolish. And as he's, okay, next one. That's the good things. They're going to Babylon. The good things are going to Babylon for their protection. They're going throughout the whole world. They're out in the whole world today. There are American Jews who've gotten saved. There are Polish Jews who've gotten saved. There are German Jews who've gotten saved. Individual Jews. The evil things. As the evil things. Which cannot be eaten. They're so vile and wicked. That's interesting. Because figs can also be used as medication. They are so evil. Surely. Thus saith the Lord. Alright. Better pay attention. Because this is a Surely. So will I give Zedekiah the king of Judah and his, his princes and the residue of Jerusalem that remain in this land and them that dwell in the land of... What on earth are they doing in Egypt? How many times in the law of God said, don't go back to Egypt? They're out of place. I will deliver them to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth for their heart. That is also today. You realize there have been Jews that God moved out of Israel and placed them in places where the Nazis gathered them up and murdered them and burned them and tortured them and the Russians That is Jewish history for their hurt. You rejected my, his blood be upon us and our children. Wrong words to say. To be a reproach and a proverb, there are many jokes about the Jewish people. A taunt and a curse. Listen, Adolf Hitler tried to exterminate them all. The Antichrist is going to try to exterminate them all. There are groups in America that completely have nothing to do with the Jewish people. Don't believe the KKK is Christian. They hate the Jews. They despise the Jews. The Bible says, whoso curses the Jew, curses Abraham's children, God will curse him. Pass on to Isaac and pass on to Jacob. I don't, and I know the United Nations are not for the Israel, the Jews. In all places, whether I shall drive them. Wherever they are, God put them there. And God may put some Jews somewhere in the world for them to hear the gospel. I will send a sword, war, and famine and pestilence. How often that's been showing up. America needs to wake up. They're saying uh, the west coast of America and Canada is stream heat and they're, and they're burning and it's just 
People are dying from the heat wave, and they're saying it's global warming. No, it's God. We had a building down south here in the, in the Miami Dade County. The building collapsed. Tragic. And now they're saying, well, global warming has caused the tides of the ocean to come up and the water going into the building. The tide is global warming. And they're having to think, well, look at the pictures in the Antarctic and these are places are disappearing. And they just had another building collapse in uh, uh, Washington, D.C. With already having, I think, the third or fourth hurricane named storm in Atlantic before they're even supposed to come. We had multiple hurricanes last year in the Gulf. We're getting extreme weather. We got COVID-19. Now, I forget what this, this, this other virant of COVID-19 is. It's just wickedness. And God is judging the world. Think about the things that are happening that the media is not reporting. How many babies are being murdered at abortion clinics still to this day? How many of these shootings have been happening? How much gross and detest crime? I uh, read in New York City, this woman's walking down the street, she was attacked, taken, tackled down to the ground, and she was gross. I just read... Uh, I think it was New York, this, this rabbi is outside of the synagogue and he's killed. We just had a cop here shot in the head. And some kind of malignant, I can't say malignant group. Why do we have these groups? Why do we have these groups that are out for no good of the people? Because the Constitution says, of the people, for the people, and they have their rights. Okay, fine. You know what other nations would do with, with the people, what they're doing in America? You know what other nations would do? They would execute them. They got in the West Coast, you know, they're, they're pro. We don't want no cops to fund the police and all that. If they were doing that in China, they'd be executed. And the media wouldn't be able to report a thing. These black people were up on the rise and black lives matter. You couldn't do that in Africa. What these black people are trying to do in America, it wouldn't happen in your home country of Africa. And then they, oh, we're, we're, we're American. Why do you say African-American? Why is African first? You're just as prejudiced as anybody in the whole world. Black lives matter. Oh, what about other lives? The National Organization for Colored People. What about white people? What about brown uh, uh, you know, that's that's my stand. I'm not I'm not prejudiced or anything. I'm just stating the fact, stating the truth. And truth hurts. Truth is true. I will send the sword, the, the famine, the pestilence among them. So, if God, I watch. In all places, whether I shall drive them. And, and. Alright, so, you're, you're at somebody's house. And you're sitting down. Would you like some cookies? Yeah, I love a cookie. And would you like to have a glass of milk? Yeah, sure, no problem. Thank you. And you get some cookies, and you get a glass of milk. And it says in verse 9, All places, whether I shall drive them, and I will send sword, famine, and pestilence. Do you realize some of these plagues that are happening is because of the Jewish people? Now be careful. Don't you curse them. You pray for Jerusalem. You pray for the Jews. They are God's people. But their rejection of Jesus, their rejection of Jehovah, their rejection of their word of God and the word of God, and the fact is, they are 
alienated from God, from Jehovah, there in all the world. And these plagues and problems also are combined with Christians who are not living right and doing wrong. So you got God's people, the Jews, you got God's people, the, the Christians, both acting like Judah. And the Christian thinks in defilance of Revelation chapter, everything is getting hunky, great, we're just going to have great revival. Now, I believe a revival will be individual, not corporate like the Jewish people. Jewish people individually will get saved now, the church age, not corporate. I believe a revival can move from a person to a family, to a spouse, and then the children. I believe that revival can, can spread into the church. If that church and everybody in that church wants to do right, in order to have revival, you've got to clean the house, like we read in Kings and Chronicles, where there were kings that did right, and they got rid of Baal. They got rid of the Sodomites. They got rid of the filth. They got rid of the gods. And they cleaned up the house of God. And they repaired the house of God. And they sought the Lord. That's a revival. That is not going to happen in a church that loves heroes, that loves Ishtar, and that loves Tamun, and the celebration of dead soldiers. You want to celebrate soldiers? Celebrate live ones. Ones that are retired, that are active. What about, I mean, David's list of soldiers. They weren't dead. But I've been in a church where you have pictures of dead soldiers. There's nothing you can do for them now. And the implication I got, I, I didn't have ever time to, but the implication, one of those pictures, the guy that puts them up, I, the guy, I believe, I more lean to, that guy never witnessed to him. Oh, she was my friend and doesn't, and beating around the bush, didn't witness. And then, not only do you have the Jew people, Israelites, who are living wrong, and are the children of God, and God as their father has to correct and chastise their, his children. And then the Christians who are the children of God, and are living wrong, and has to be chastised by the father, the Hebrews 12 or 13, I forget which one, And then you've got the world who's not God's children. And as the days of Noah, did you read in Genesis, I always forget what, what chapter uh, Noah is, 7, 8, 9, I think it is. Did you read what it was? And there was violence in Noah. And the violence is God says, my spirit can't dwell with these people. And what did God do for those that were not his children? He drowned them out. He said, Noah, once you build that ark, stand on that ark and preach to the people. We got today, they're building arks, but they're not preaching. They're building church buildings. But they're not preaching. And those that are standing the ground like Noah and preaching, and like Enoch did preach, those that are God's people, those who are Israelites, God's people, and those that are of the world are, are ranking and are, are making fun of, and chastising, and rebuking, and scorning those that are doing right, like Jeremiah. So the world and Israel and the church is gathered into two classes, not three. You're either good figs or you're bad figs. Jesus said, wherefore by your fruit ye shall know them. Can, can an 
evil tree produce good fruit? Can a good tree produce evil fruit? Absolutely correctly not. So if your fruit is evil, you can't say you're a good Christian. Though many do. And those that do produce good fruit, they're not saying, oh, I got good fruit. They're humble, trying to live right, and repenting of their sins, just thinking, hey, I'm no good. It's the ones with the evil feet. Look how great we are. Look how wonderful we are. So when we look at these things and we look at what Jesus said, wherefore by their fruit ye shall know them. So if they're fruit, you cannot serve two masters. You'll love the one or hate the other one. You can't serve God and man. So if you got a church and there is one word of God, the King James Bible, and you got a church that has other Bibles, there's one God. And if you got a church that's got Eros, his star, and Tay Moons, it's not God. And you got you got there's God the Father and God the Son, and then you got humanity worshiping man. You got the Christians who's to be humble, and you got on the other side you got Christians that are prideful. You're either a good thing or you're a naughty thing. And as a Christian, I started to say I live both roots. I am good and I am evil. I shouldn't be evil. And Paul said that which I do, I don't want to do or should do. That which I don't want to do, I do. And then when we have the evil figs, if we confess our sins, he's faithful to, to, to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Many, many, many Christians from the Laodicean church age is going to stand before God, Jesus Christ, at the judgment seat of Christ. And they're going to put their basket down. Let me show you what's going to be said. Back to chapter 24. And the Lord said unto me, What seest thou? Many Christians. The evil. Very evil. Their basket of figs are going to be evil. That's not what God wants. We're called to produce fruit. Which fruit are you producing? And it's interesting that, that the area of the grocery store for fruits and vegetables is called the produce section. It's also quite interesting. It's usually the first aisle you walk into at the grocery store. And what was the very first thing that man was put into? He was put into the garden. To what? Dress the garden. 